Hey, this is Epimetheus. This video is a collaboration between the fantastic YouTube channel From Nothing and I. Having first watched many of Jabari's videos over on the From Nothing channel several months ago, that really motivated me to start researching more about Sub-Saharan African history and make a couple videos on the subject. After this video, be sure to head over to his channel, subscribe, and leave lots of likes. I am sure you will find the subject matter as fascinating as I did. And now, the history of the Ashanti. The Ashanti Kingdom was a West African state that at its greatest extent ruled over an area that roughly corresponds to the modern-day country of Ghana between the years of 1640 and 1902. The success of the Ashanti was due to their ability to rapidly adapt and innovate, including the early adoption of European firearms. The region that would become the Ashanti Empire was inhabited by several unique human populations since as early as 150,000 years before present, including the Sangoan culture, and later on, the Kintampo complex, a collection of diverse villages that are credited with spreading sedentary lifestyles to the region, where they bred livestock and farmed local crops. After they abandoned the region around 2700 years before present, a new population would replace them, a population of people that are widely accepted by DNA analysis to be the ancestors of much of Ghana's modern day population. The largest waves of migration are believed to have taken place between the 11th and 15th centuries CE. Among the largest of these populations are the Akan, who make up 48% of Ghana's modern day population, as well as 41% of the population of the Ivory Coast. They founded a series of states throughout the medieval and pre-modern era, with the oldest one being the Bonomon Kingdom, which was located in the northern region of what is now modern day Ghana, established by a group of migrants who fled from the Empire of Ghana, as it became increasingly consumed by Islamic influence. Not to be confused with the modern day nation of Ghana which exists in a totally different region than the ancient empire of Ghana. From the kingdom of Bonoman, several waves of Akan people branched out and formed smaller states in what would eventually become the Kwaman clan state. Established roughly around 1600 CE, the Kwaman clan state was a collection of small Akan communities, which slowly but surely became increasingly more centralized before eventually evolving into several small kingdoms. One of these states known as Dinchira, founded in 1620, had the upper hand seeing as they controlled most of the region's gold mines and thus grew very wealthy through trade in the metal. With the power and wealth generated from these gold mines, the Dinchira established aggressive tributary status over the surrounding Akan states. One of these tributary states was Kumasiman, founded in 1640, the predecessor of the Ashanti kingdom. Fed up with the oppression his kingdom faced from the Dinchira, King Ose Tutu summoned a spiritual leader, Anochi Okumpo, to his palace to request assistance with a war that he planned to wage on the Dinchira. According to legend, Anochi Okompo received a golden stool from the heavens, given to him by Niame, the supreme creator in the Akan religion, for use as a symbol of unity of all of the other surrounding Akan kingdoms that were under Dinchira dominion. After a confederation was established, Ose Tutu led several small detachments of his army to war against the Dinchira kingdom's forces, whom were led by the ruler Ntim Yakari. Yakari's forces managed to drive the small Ashanti forces out of the cities of Adunku, Abontim, and Aputu Goya, probably butchered those names, which was Ose Tutu's plan all along, as their main body plan to catch Yakari's forces off guard and defeat them in the Battle of Eyase. After decisively defeating the Dinchira and establishing their independence in 1701, the Ashanti reigned supreme as the largest and most powerful state to ever exist in the region, until its eventual British rule. The Ashanti began trading with Europeans as early as the 15th century. After conquering the Achim, Akwamu, Wasa, and other small coastal kingdoms, they gained a full monopoly on European goods between the 18th and 19th centuries, where they traded gold, ivory, and slaves to European merchants for Dane guns, becoming one of the few large West African states at the time to have an army completely equipped with firearms. The Fon Kingdom to the east, most famously known for their special corps of female warriors, still struggled against the Ashanti in numerous wars, despite also having an army fully equipped with firearms. The kingdom of Achim to the south was also growing increasingly less tolerant of Ashanti rule, which the Ashanti king at the time, Kusio Bodum, was largely criticized for ignoring. His aversion to the problem opened the door to the Achim and the Homi establishing contact with one another, when they established an alliance which was also assisted by the Yoruba kingdom of Oyo to the east, another powerful West African kingdom known for its cavalry, that existed in what is now modern-day Nigeria, who had conquered the Dahomey just 16 years prior in 1748, despite lacking firearms in its imperial army. This triple alliance of Oyo, Achim, and the Homi warriors ambushed a large force of 12,000 Ashanti in 1764, inflicting a devastating and embarrassing defeat on them in the Battle of Atakpame. Kusi Obodum was immediately deposed for his negligence, and replaced by more youthful ruler Ose Kwadwo, who reigned between the years of 1764 and 1777. Determined to do better than his predecessor, he withdrew all interest from the kingdom of the Homi, 
He took the throne after the belligerent Triple Alliance was dismantled and demonstrated excellent diplomacy with the Fanti and Denchira while taking full advantage of rivalries between the Wasa and Achim kingdoms. The Fanti, on the other hand, remained suspicious of the Ashanti's true intentions, as it seemed their relations were fueled by ambitions to establish direct control over their coastal trade and European firearms. Relations between the Fanti states and the Ashanti were always complex and awkward, until it finally manifested into full-on hostility in the year 1806, when the Fanti safely harbored a group of fugitives accused by the Ashanti of robbing graves. The Fanti refused to hand them over, which led to the Ashanti-Fanti War, a long conflict between the two groups that finally ended in 1824, when Osei Bantu's forces conquered all Fanti states. The same year, the Ashanti also defeated a British force, as they had protectorate status over the Fanti, with the obligation to protect the interests of the Fanti from enemies. After the victory over the British, the two kingdoms signed a Treaty of Peace in 1831, which lasted for the next 30 years. During this time, the British were shocked at the sophistication of the Ashanti Kingdom and reacted with disbelief when traveler and writer Thomas Bowditch described indoor plumbing, vast road systems, and highly complex judiciary and governing systems. The Ashanti even had a system of hieroglyphics known as Adinkra. In 1864, hostilities would once again reignite. A territorial dispute arose when the Ashanti took control of the coastal towns once more. A British force was dispatched five years later and reconquered the city of Elmina, located on the coast of the Ashanti territory. They followed up with another force in 1874, where Sir Garnet Walsley led an army into Kumasi, the capital of Imperial Ashanti. After the capture of the city, both the Ashanti and the British had underestimated one another, and not just militarily. The British were surprised at the sophistication of Ashanti architecture, government, and infrastructure, while the Ashanti were surprised by the overwhelming technological superiority of the British. The British claimed these newly captured southern provinces of the Ashanti Kingdom for the British Gold Coast Colony. After the news of this defeat spread to the northern regions of the empire, numerous states began to rebel, leading to internal conflict and strife, allowing the British to make quick work of the Ashanti over the next few decades. After the Ashanti declined an official request of protectorate status by the British, they marched their army into the Ashanti Kingdom and assimilated them into a protectorate anyway. Utilizing newly developed military technology such as repeating rifles, rocket artillery, and Gatling guns, and burning Kumasi to the ground in 1896. In 1902, one last valiant uprising was led by warrior queen Ya Asantewa, who sought to protect the Golden Stool. As the British knew of its significance and sought to capture it as a means of crushing the Ashanti people's sense of unity once and for all. Despite heavy casualties on both sides, she was successful in protecting the Stool, which can still be observed in Ghana today. However, this war resulted in the full subjugation of the Kingdom of Ashanti in the British Gold Coast. In 1935, the Ashanti Kingdom was re-established where it still exists to present day on a sub-national level in modern-day Ghana. Thanks Jabari, and be sure everyone to go over to his channel, link at the top of the description, and subscribe, leave lots of likes, and check out a bunch of those videos. And a huge thanks to my patrons over on Patreon for as little as a buck a month you can help improve this channel which is like less than a third of the price of a cup of coffee. And if not, you can still help by leaving a comment, liking, and subscribing. Thanks so much.